It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. Please make sure to share this video, make sure to like this video, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure to hit that notification down below so that uh, you're alerted when the newest video drops, but make sure that you like, share, subscribe. Uh, let's begin. And where shall we begin today? I really don't know. I think I'm going to begin right here. I was just looking uh, through some social media uh, earlier today, and I'm looking at people who are 40 years old, 50 plus years old, and they're showing us their Halloween costumes. And I find this a little fascinating that we're now watching the world burn. We've seen this atrocity uh, take place in Israel over the weekend. People are getting very, very nervous about what could happen here. Uh, other countries in the Middle East now talking about getting involved in this. We're involved in this already. And I see adult Americans dressing up like Superman, Batman, uh, a, a comic book hero, and I'm a little, I'm a little startled. I, I really am. Uh, watching adults in America de decorate their homes with, with Halloween uh, decorations in their front lawn, showing us their Halloween costumes, bragging about what Halloween party they're going to, to go to, while we're watching the world begin to burn and war is be get, beginning to come. Uh, a reality here, ladies and gentlemen, and yet we have people in their 40s and 50s going on social media pretending to be a comic book hero, pretending to be Superman, pretending to be Spider-Man. I think what people ought to do is really become something real and come back to the real world. Become a warrior. Uh, care about what's happening in your country. Care about what's happening to other people who are being uh, mutilated right now slaughtered while you brag and, and, and go on social media and show us your Halloween costume. People are really living in fantasy land, aren't they? They're really living in this bubble and they think nothing can happen to them. While people are being hurt and killed and we're seeing all these atrocities and, and these torturous acts take place over in the Middle East right now, and yet people believe it can't happen to them. They won't, even, they won't even acknowledge it. They're getting ready for their next party. You know, another thing I noticed today too is just going through social media, going through uh, some videos. And, you, you, you know, if you have a following on social media, wherever your platform may be, I think it's a total disservice right now not to make people aware of what is going on. You know, I'm surprised that a lot of people who make these type of videos, these preparation type videos, that they're not, um, they're not being honest with people with what's going on, that they're not talking about or condemning what is taking place right now and what took place over the weekend and the escalation uh, that we're beginning to watch take place right now. Now, they either believe that nothing can happen here or they're just scared because they're completely unprepared, or maybe it's a combination of both. You know, I think about those people that were running over the weekend back to their homes to hide, carrying their children, hiding in closets, hiding in rooms, hiding under the bed, just waiting uh, to lose their lives. It would be a little bit different here, I believe, um, here in America, we have many more people who are armed. Only 2% are armed in Israel. These people relied and depended on the government to protect them. And they were let down. Many people just waited to die. Terrible. This is why it's so important to be a self-sufficient to be a warrior now, to know how to handle your own business, to be your own security detail. We talk about being your own central bank. Well, it is even more important to be your own security detail. You cannot wait for the police to arrive. You cannot wait for the military to arrive. You're going to have to deal with your own business. Otherwise, people lose their lives.
And that's exactly what happened, unfortunately. Make sure you have the proper tools and training immediately, ladies and gentlemen. I've been making these videos for what? Six, seven years? I don't even know how long. Six, seven years. And, you know, I remember probably four or five years ago, I had a law enforcement uh, an individual in law enforcement, a police officer, write to me saying that I was out of my mind to think anything like this could ever happen. We look at the divide of this country, we look at the crime wave in this country, and now we're thinking, now people are, are beginning to think, like, how many people are here from all over the world? How many millions of people are here? And what are their intentions? Where did they come from? What do we know about them? Why are they here? I hope that law enforcement individual, or uh, that officer, I hope he has woken up. I hope he sees now uh, what is going on. Yet, there were people that laughed, people said it couldn't happen. You know, this is just four or five years ago. Look where we're at today. This is why I'm repetitive, that you're getting in the best shape of your life, that you're out there training, that you're, that you're um, being as proficient as possible with your tools, that you're taking security extremely, that it's an extremely important asset, that you're taking your security very, very seriously. Because without security, there's no reason to have assets. There's, there's no reason to have anything because somebody will just take it. And one asset that, that you have is your life, your family's life. And if you can't protect it, you have some very sick, demented, demonic people walking the face of the earth who are here now. Uh, I'm listening to the news today. You can go on CNN. You can go on CBS. You can go on Fox. You can go on any, any one of these major media companies. And there are now people telling you that there are terror cells now in America. So I guess we should just stay in our bubbles, pretend to be Superman or Spider-Man, and just pretend nothing's going to happen to us or our families. You can do that. That's your choice. Then we have people like Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Uh, I was watching her on the news today. They were asking about what she thought about, did she denounce uh, the demonic acts that took place with these little babies in Israel. I'm not even going to mention it, but it was horrific. She wouldn't say a word. Now, look, I get it. I'm not calling everybody in Palestine a, an evil, bad person. I'm not calling everybody in Israel an evil, bad person. War is a terrible thing. But... You cannot argue the fact that there is a terrorist group called Hamas coming out of Palestine that did absolutely horrific, committed absolutely horrific crimes, absolutely demonic. And that doesn't mean that all the people of Palestine are bad or evil or demonic, okay? They're just caught in all of this. But nobody on either side anywhere can condone what just took place. Uh, we know where it came from, we know who did it, and we know it's extremely demonic. America has committed a lot of atrocities, ladies and gentlemen, and I would never sit here uh, and, and, and condone it. So, I, I mean, I've called it out as much as I could. The whole thing on Iraq, disaster, Afghanistan, disaster. We should have never been to these places. We have killed a lot of people all over the world, and yet we seem to justify it and think it's okay. I don't think it's okay at all. We need to call it out. And um, as, as being uh, Christian, as being American, as being honest, we need to call this out. It is not right for any nation to be doing things like this. Again, America has committed some atrocities, no doubt about it. And now we're watching uh, th this demonic activity coming from Hamas. And this is going to have a lot of tentacles and it's going to reach out all over the globe and it's coming right here on U.S. soil. So we got to call this stuff out. We really do. And what's even, you know, even more shocking is we watching these barbarous acts taking place in the Middle East and we're watching um, so many things happen to our U.S. economy. We're, ha we're watching things happen socially, and the markets just go up. And, you know, somebody last week made a comment saying that I'm, I get mad when the markets go up. No, I'm mad that the markets are going up 
when they shouldn't be. I'm, I'm mad that the markets are completely manipulated and controlled. I'm mad that these markets are giving people a false sense of security that the economy is doing okay. Uh, that you should go buy a house now because the stock market's up. You should invest in these markets because they're going up. Based on what? These markets, you know, should not be going up. How in the world did we, we see um, the 10-year bond yield get slammed down? I don't know. What are we down? 20 plus basis points in just a couple days. How does that happen? You know how it happens. The Fed goes in and buys all this debt up. Everything is an illusion now, ladies and gentlemen. And so I condemn, and I, I'm just calling out uh, this activity that we're watching take place on Wall Street because people are getting a false sense of security. Just because the stock market is up does not mean the economy is good. I think we can all agree to that now. But we have to question, why is the stock market going up when people uh, in the Middle East are being killed, when we have probably 80 plus percent of this country living paycheck to paycheck. We're over a trillion dollars in credit card debt. We're now in two wars. We owe almost $34 trillion in, in national debt, $190 trillion with unfunded liabilities, and the stock market is going up. We really have no leadership here. We have 43 million people on food stamps. We're, we're beginning to see foreclosures rise. We're seeing more chapter 11s uh, with small business rising. We're, we're, we're watching a commercial real estate meltdown. We're watching a housing crash take place. Nobody's buying houses. We're looking at interest rates at, what, a 30-year high. We're looking at uh, mortgage rates uh, at, at, you know near 8% now. And yet the stock market is going up. Somebody please comment down below and tell me why the stock market is going up. Yes, I know that the market likes war and these defense companies are going to make more and more money. But overall, are you doing better? Is the U.S. economy doing better? Are you making more at work? Are you saving more money? Are you paying less at the grocery store? Are you paying less for a new car? No. But yet the stock market's going up. So... It's not that I'm mad that the stock market's going up. I'm just mad that people are being lied to, that they're being bamboozled and duped and they're being sold a false sense of security here. Now, uh, shifting gears here a little bit, we have the Fed minutes today. And basically uh, what it looks like to me is we're going to get one more rate hike this year. I do believe it will be November. That's my thoughts. Uh, the the, the, the uh, Fed minutes also uh, express that we're going to see rates go higher for longer. Um, not good news, but the markets are up today. Higher for longer and another rate hike guaranteed for this year. Markets up today. Now, I want to talk about uh, something else here too, and it kind of all goes back into um, what we're what we're talking about here. That's that's happening around the world. Um, the word escalation, uh, this is a word that I think we're going to uh, be seeing used a lot more in the coming weeks. And I was reading um, an article here on the economiccollapse.com. After Israel sends troops into Gaza, watch out for Hezbollah, Iran, Syria, and the U.S. to all get involved in the great Middle East war. We're already involved. We're already on our way. Israel currently is redditing for a months-long ground campaign in Gaza. Now, you have to watch out for Iran and Lebanese Hezbollah to join Hamas uh, in the battle. And then you got Syria as a, as, a, as a wild card, too, that could get involved. And then this brings us to the U.S. We're, we're already there. But then what happens here? What if they bring it here? While we're over there, while we're over in Ukraine, uh, possibly Taiwan, What's going to happen here as we begin to see more and more of these terror cells unleashed here in America? Ladies and gentlemen, please take your security very, very seriously. It should be, next to God, your number one asset right now. Forget about flipping houses, buying a house, buying gold, buying silver. Your number one asset right now needs to be security. You need to be putting food and water away. I was watching uh, Matt today on his channel, Ox Talks, and he brought up uh, making sure that you have food and water put away. And you need to go out. If you don't have enough right now for 30 days minimum, 
you need to go out right now, get to a, a Costco, get to a Winco, get to a Walmart, wherever you got to go. Go get canned food, go get extra water, go get some emergency foods. Make sure you have a way to cook this. I have jet boils. We have... Um, we have uh, uh, charcoal for the grills. We we have uh, uh, wood. We have uh, um, Coleman uh, uh, little uh, grills with the little uh, um, propane canisters. So I, I would have as many ways to be able to cook the food as possible. Again, charcoal, wood, propane, things like that. Make sure you have water. But again, many people have emergency food and they have food but then they have no way of, of heating it up, no way of cooking it. So make sure you have that. At least, in, in my opinion, many would probably argue and say much more, but at least have 30 days. That's a start. And that's not going to cost a whole lot of money. Just go get 30 days, have a jet boil, have a little Coleman stove, have a, have a charcoal uh, grill, some way to, to heat this stuff up. Um, so important right now. So important. Strategic Petroleum Reserve near historic lows as war breaks out in Middle East. 351 barrels currently. Uh, that's what we're holding. We had over 650 million barrels stockpile for most of the last decade. Why are we purposely jeopardizing our national security? Somebody please answer that to me. It, it seems to me now that we're in two wars and we are using up our strategic petroleum reserves just to push gas prices down. And we are really jeopardizing our national security. If we get into a full-blown war or a world war, we're in very, very big, big trouble. This was interesting today. This was on the hedge. American searching, will I get drafted to war hits highest level since Iraq 2007? Uh, I will say this. And I think many of you would agree, comment down below. And please feel free to comment about anything you want to talk about, anything I'm discussing here, anything you want to discuss, comment down below. But this is the closest to World War III I've ever seen in my lifetime. And it is really making me think uh, a lot right now about, do I have enough? Do I have enough preparations? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, my head's on a swivel when I go out. I carry everywhere I go. Um, I'm, I'm working out harder. I'm going to make sure that I'm the hardest person in the room to kill and you should think the same way. This is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know who's here. There's no, even the people that we did background checks on, we have no, I, those back, you can't do background checks for most people coming from most of these countries from around the world. It's impossible. Uh, they don't have the same system. They can't even keep track of these people's backgrounds. How are we going to know what their backgrounds are? We're very, very close to something very, very big escalating, ladies and gentlemen. I was watching some more social media videos today of the U.S. military, and they were posted um, actually on this article on The Hedge. You can check out, um, uh, if you go to The Hedge and check out this article, America, America, American Searching, Will I Get Drafted to War? Check out some of the social media videos of our military. We will not last 20 minutes in a world war. I'm looking at our soldiers, the videos that they film, how ridiculous it is. It's embarrassing, to be honest with you. It gives me no um, belief or comfort knowing that these are the people that are protecting us. Um, then I look at videos of Russian soldiers, Chinese soldiers. There's a big difference, ladies and gentlemen. These people are ready for war. We are not. We are very, very soft. Russia, China, watching those videos, scary. It really is. We would not stand a chance. And I'm sorry if this offends you, but this is the real world. This is not your grandparents' army. This is not the military that your grandfather served. This is not uh, those great people, World War II. This is not the same. I mean, you're watching military men twerking on social media. 
Uh, we have a very divided military. We have a lot of confusion in our military. We don't have a lot of leadership in our military. You're going to put these kids out there and they will absolutely be slaughtered. And I know people who have kids in the military right now. They're great kids. Um, but I don't think they knew or their parents knew what exactly they were getting into. And unfortunately, they may find out. Think about we lost an F-35 for, what, 28 hours about a month ago? We couldn't find it for over a day. They put an 800 number out hoping that you or I would find it and call the 800 number. Now, I don't know. Do you even believe that? Was that plane flown somewhere else? Did it, was it taken over um, through its system, a pilot ejected? But was that plane taken over? I mean, we know that China has all the backdoor technology to our planes and ships. So was it remotely flown somewhere else? I have no idea. I mean, you can speculate uh, for the next week on where that plane really is. Did it really crash? But why didn't the other F-35 follow the plane? Makes no, no sense whatsoever. So there's a lot of um, questions there. But, you know, look, you can come to your own conclusion. But I'm also going back thinking about the balloon that was flying over the U.S. for a week, flying over our military bases, sending all that information back to China. No big deal. So, I mean, this doesn't give me much comfort knowing that – uh, we're allowing balloons to fly fly around the U.S. That we're losing eighty million dollar planes uh, does not give me much faith in our military at this point. And then watching these social media videos of our, our of our military and our soldiers, uh, it's downright disturbing. It really is. It really is. So if things begin to set off here in the U.S., if I were you, I would not. Uh, be relying on the system or the government to come and save me. I really wouldn't. You better rely on you. And I'm going to close with this really quick. Wholesale inflation rose 0.5% uh, in September. So we have PPI up. Core PPI was up 0.3% versus 0.2%. And again, the markets just shake it off. So inflation continues to tick up. No big deal. Markets go up. So I'm going to leave it there today. I think that we're in a, a time where nobody really knows what's even going to happen tomorrow. But you have to be prepared today for what could possibly and potentially break loose tomorrow. Uh, we have no idea what's coming. But I think we're going to see huge events coming to the U.S. Now, you can sit on the couch and, and eat a box of Twinkies and continue to play your video games. That's fine. But I think personally, this is the time I would be getting in the best shape of my life immediately. I would be proficient with my training and my tools. And... I would be walking extremely close to God because if you want to talk spiritual warfare, you're watching demonic entities go and slaughter innocent people in the Middle East and to think that that can't happen here, you're sadly mistaken. I hope, if you really think that can't happen here, I hope you wake up out of your coma. I hope you jump out of your bubble before it's too late because I don't want to see anything happen to you. I don't want to see anything happen to anybody. The more proficient, the better shape we're all in, the more awake we all are, and the more that we're walking close to God, we are going to be a much harder nation to conquer, a much tougher nation to attack, um, a much brighter and better nation for the entire world, the better off we are. We need to be, we need to each better ourselves right now. Be an example to everybody else here and everybody else across the globe. We need to, to, to take action right now for ourselves. Don't rely on anybody else or any entity or government or military or police to protect you. Get in the best possible shape you can right now and expect things to get difficult. We are going to see things, ladies and gentlemen. I truly, truly believe that. If we don't, wonderful, great. Then you're in better shape. You're more prepared. 
uh, you're walking close to God, these are all positives. But if you're not doing these things right now and things begin to break loose, you're going to land up like a lot of these people did over the weekend. And I don't want to see that happen to you. God bless. Stay safe. Pray for this nation. Pray for Israel. Uh, we are dealing with very, very dark, evil, demonic spirits in this world now. This is going to be global. It's coming to a town near you. Don't ignore it. God bless.